Oh, what are some different types of fossils? Well, one is going to be actual organisms. Uh, and so, for example, this is a picture of a, a clam shell. And so that's the real thing. It hasn't been altered in any way uh, by uh, chemical um, uh, changes. So that's the original shell that this thing lived in. Okay, another type of a fossil would be uh, tracks and burrows. So now these are not living organisms. So what these are are the holes made by the living organisms. So here is, for example, some uh, fossilized mud, and you can see it's got holes in it, and then that's where worms have um, gone through it. Uh, another example of this would be tracks, so that there are examples of where there was some mud, and then a dinosaur walked across the mud, and it left imprints of its uh, feet in the mud. So those would be tracks and burrows. Okay, another kind is called a uh, coprolite. And a coprolite is fossilized poop. So this is a picture of some dinosaur poop. And now this dinosaur poop uh, has been mineralized. So while it was in the ground, water percolated through the poop and it removed uh, the carbon and then it replaced it with silica so that this thing is going to feel like a rock and it's not going to have any kind of an odor associated with it but it has the exact shape of the original uh, poop and you can even tell by looking at the poop of a dinosaur whether it was a, a herbivore that ate uh, vegetables or whether it was a carnivore and it ate meat so just by looking at the shape of the poop there are scientists who spend their entire lives just looking at poop. Alright, the next one is called a gastrolith and uh, chickens have little pieces of sand that they ingest and it goes into their crop and then what happens as they eat uh, grass and stuff then the sand rubs up against it and it grinds it up. Okay, this is the, is the size of the stones that a dinosaur would eat. So a dinosaur would swallow these stones, they would go into their, their uh, crop, their gizzard, and then as they would eat plants, these stones would be rubbing up against each other and it would help to grind them down. Now, looking at those, you might think that perhaps uh, that came out of a river because you know that you find smooth stones in a river. So how could you know that those were actually in the gizzard of a reptile? Well, if you're out in the middle of a desert and you find uh, the, the fossilized remains of some kind of an animal and then in the middle of it you find these smooth stones, well, that's a pretty good indicator that the stones actually were inside of that reptile. Okay, another uh, type of a fossil would be tree rings. And so by looking at the thicknesses of those tree rings, uh, you can uh, tell whether the season was a wet season or a dry season. And then by counting up the number of tree rings, you can figure out how old the tree was when it got cut down. So a, a tree will have one tree ring per growing season. And then you've got varves. So varves are going to be sediment that is in a lake and then every year that sediment will uh, pile up on the bottom of the lake. And so you can count the number of layers and then that will give you information about how old the lake is and then you can also by looking at the thicknesses of the deposits you can determine how much sedimentation was occurring in that lake. Okay and then lastly we've got uh, pseudo fossils. So a pseudo fossil looks like a fossil and so if you were to look at this thing you might think well those are leaves and so that is a fossilized plant of some sort. Well it's not. 
So those uh, leaf-like things are caused by the growth of minerals inside of the rock. So that's going to be called a pseudo-fossil. It's not really a fossil, it just looks like one. Okay, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will talk about how fossils are preserved.